This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. All right, let's get practical with setting up our SSHD in Linux now with a PAM module to allow for YubiKey authentication, our little second factor here of uh, awesome one-time passwordness. And I have to say, first and foremost, mad props over to Matt Le uh, Levavi. I hope I'm not pronouncing that wrong, but uh, he's def he uh, put together an awesome blog post, we'll link in the show notes, that basically takes a lot of the stuff from the different forums and the GitHubs and the, you know how it is, to really find all of the things that you need to do to actually make this work. And then I found a couple others to make that work. So anyway, hopefully this will be pretty concise. And what I'm doing here is I'm setting up uh, SSH D, our uh, SSH or uh, open SSH daemon in Linux to um, use a PAM module for YubiKey so that when we authenticate, we have to plug that in in addition to the password that we already provide instead of like what we have been doing, which is key based authentication. So I'm going to be setting this up on my local machine right here, and I'm just going to do a little SSH to localhost to show you a demo of that. And I've already set it up, so I'm just going to kind of backtrack and walk through some of the parts of it uh, first of all. So uh, the first thing you need to do is make a directory called Yubico in your home. And if I ls tilde slash dot Yubico, I'll see that there we go. I already have that directory there and I have a file in there that we'll get into in just a bit. Now the other thing that you're going to need to do is install a whole bunch of different uh, dependencies. And so for the most part, sudo apt-get install. And then the uh, stuff that you're going to need is autoconf. You're going to need libtool. You're going to need libusb tac 1.0 tac 0 tac dev. You're going to need libcurl 4 tac open ssl tac dev. And you're going to need libpam tac dev. Okay. And so with all of those, you're also going to need to go ahead and download a, um, a couple of different packages from Yubico. You're going to need Yubico pam, Yubico c client, libyubikey, and YubiKey TAC personalization. And I'm here in Yubi stuff, ILS, and I see that I have all of those here. And we've got links to where you can find those different GitHubs and those code.google.com sites to download those. So with all of those tar GZs already extracted into here, I see I've got my different directories. What you're going to need to do in each of these is um, configure and make and install them like you normally would. Uh, the thing that to note here is that the Yubikio TAC Yubico TAC PAM module, this one right here, this needs to be installed last. So for example, we'd go into uh, lib YubiKey, and what you would need to do is issue a sudo auto reconf TAC TAC install. Then you would need to do a sudo uh, dot slash configure, and then a sudo uh, make to compile it, and then a sudo make install to go ahead, whoops, I-N-S-T-A-L-L, there we go, lab to tape is fun, and those are the steps that you're going to need to do for each of those with, like I said, the Yubico PAM being the, uh, the last one. So I'm not going to bore you with the, you know, mundaneness of installing dependencies, but those are the things that you're going to need to do. Next thing you're going to need to do is get yourself a uh, API key from upgrade.yubico.com slash get API key. And so what that entails is basically registering on their site with your YubiKey. You're going to have to plug it in and you'll have to uh, give it a uh, email address. And so now it associates this one with that email address and what it's going to do is give you a client ID uh, as well as a secret key. So I'll go ahead and show you I have the results of that right here. And so it says congratulations and you know here's your client ID and here's your secret key and it will take a couple minutes for them to synchronize those across those servers but you know, there you go. So once you've done that, you can now take that information and we can add it to a couple of configuration files. So first of all, if I come back over to my terminal, we're going to need to take a look at uh, the sshd file in our pam.d directory. So we'll do sudo, and I like vi in this case, I'm going to use vi to edit the file in slash etsy slash pam.d. There's a file called sshd. And authenticate with pam. 
crazy, recursive, awesome. Uh, and we'll notice that there's a section here right at the top called PAM configuration for secure shell. And so it's in this area right here that we're going to need to go ahead and add a parameter. Now I've already put in a pound Ubico just to kind of like give myself a little comment. But what you're going to need to enter is auth required pam underscore ubico dot so and then your ID, and in this case that's mine, and then the key, again that case it's mine. And then for right now, we're going to add the word debug. Okay, we're going to come back to that here in uh, just a bit. So once you have that entered in, go ahead, exit out, save your file, and we'll go on to the next one, which is, again, sudo vi, and this one lives in slash etsy slash pam dot d slash common tack auth. And so what we're going to see here is we're really pretty much just interested in the prepackaged modules. These right here, the primary block, right? And so I have two of them already. There's a success equals two and a success equals one. And what we'll need to do is make sure at the end of this we have both again, and we'll come back to this and remove it when we've, we're happy with it. We're going to add debug. We're also going to add try underscore first underscore pass. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So with those gone ahead and added, let's we'll quit this. And let's lastly edit our uh, SSHD configuration. So if, as you remember from previous talks about this, that lives in slash Etsy slash SSH slash SSHD underscore config, SSHD underscore config. There we go. Don't confuse SSH underscore config. That's for the client. And what we're going to need to do right here is make sure that we have these two parameters set the way we want. Um, so I'm going to do forward slash to, uh, to do, do a search. And I'm looking for password authentication. So you can see right here, here it is. And password authentication is set to yes. Now, if we were only using public uh, and private key pairs, we wouldn't want this set to yes. We might want to set it to no so that you can only authenticate with public key pairs. That's not the case here because we're actually using that password module in PAM to both accept our password that we normally know and the one-time password from a YubiKey, the thing we have. Okay, so with that set to yes, the next thing that we need to search for is challenge uh, response. And so I'll just do challenge. Oop, here we go. I'll do a challenge. And I'm at the bottom of the file, so it's not finding it. Here we go. Challenge. All right. And you see right here, challenge response authentication. And that needs to be set to no. So we've gone ahead and done that. I can go ahead and quit out of this. And finally, you need to move. Remember, we made reference to that pam underscore yubico.so file. Well, that's a library. And that comes with the yubico pam module that we did in the first step. We uh, you know, compiled that and installed it. Well, that installs to slash usr slash local slash lib slash security. You need to make sure that you move that file. And it's going to be with a command like this, sudo mv slash usr slash local slash lib slash security and the file being pam underscore y-u-b-i-c-o dot so you're going to want to move that to slash lib slash security and I will note that I've already done that I can ls slash lib slash security for pam underscore anything beginning with a Y asterisk, and you can see right there, I have my yubico.so file all ready to go. Okay, so now we'll get into actually setting up similar to, remember when we talked about public key authentication, there was those authorized keys files. Well, in this case, we have an authorized yubikey file. So at the very beginning of this, we made that directory in our home called yubico. And if I go to tilde slash dot yubico and ls, you'll see that I have an authorized uh, underscore yubikeys right here. So I'm going to go ahead and vi that file and give you uh, an idea of what that's supposed to look like. In this case, it's just one line. It's user colon and then the first 12 characters generated by the yubikey. So I'll give you an example here. If I were to do, um, I don't know, snubs, which I don't know why I would be you know, giving snubs access to my system, but if I were, and I don't know why I'd be using the same YubiKey, but regardless, if I were, now what I need to do is take this, plug it into my laptop as I normally do, and just press the button on the YubiKey, and it generates a bunch of awesome randomness. And so you would come down here, 
and get rid of everything except for the first 12 characters, okay? And so as you see, those 12 characters from my YubiKey are always the same, and the rest of it is the awesome, uh, unique one-time-ness of it. And so with those files created, we can go ahead and start testing. Now remember when I mentioned all of that debug stuff? That's so that we don't accidentally like lock ourselves out and so that we can also take a look at like a log file and see what's going on just in case we need to, you know, debug something. So in this case, what we're going to need to do is first touch a file and change the mode of it so that it'll be written. And this is our log where we can see what's going on. Okay, so normally, this is gonna be done by doing a sudo touch and it lives in slash var slash run slash pam tack debug dot log. I've already created the file. You're also going to want to do a um, chmod go go plus w to slash var slash run slash pam tack debug, which again, I've already done. And so if I were to cat that file, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of successful authentications and tokens and things like that. And you know, there we go, which is pretty cool. So now what we're going to need to do here is go, uh, restart our SSH service. It's really that simple. So if I do sudo, and we're going to actually use the services command this time because it's the proper way to do it. So sudo service ssh restart. And so now our new ssh uh, d underscore config file has taken effect and all of those things. And so what we have here, you know, go ahead and clear, is I can ssh to darren at localhost. And what it's going to do is it will ask me for my password, which I know. So I'm going to type in my password. And now I press the button, so right after I finish typing in my password, I press the button on my YubiKey, and there we go, and it logs me in. And you saw how there is a carriage return when you uh, pr uh, touch your YubiKey, the button on the YubiKey, so it already gets that carriage return in there, there's nothing more to do. You literally just type your, your password you already know, touch the YubiKey, it does the random awesomeness, and then you're logged in. So how about that? I'm really stoked. I want to hear what you guys think, what methods you use, what else you would like to see us cover in, in this case. And uh, we'll be continuing on with all sorts of other fun stuff on this crazy series of proxies and privacy and authentication and fun stuff. So uh, go ahead and hit us up, feedback at hack5.org. We're going to take a quick break, but when we get back, we've got plenty of your guys' feedback to follow up on, some awesome emails we've gotten from you guys. So thanks so much. We'll be back here in just a bit. If you're setting up a website for your new business, showcasing your portfolio, your new blog, domain.com is the best place to go for your next great idea. If you need to register a new domain, consider getting a new .com. You see, a .com is the original. We all know it's the best. It's globally understood. It has immediate credibility no matter what name you choose. Or if you're even into investing and buying and selling domains, .coms have the greatest aftermarket value. Find new .com domains over at domain.com. You know, Shannon and I love them because they're so easy to use, they're affordable, they're reliable, plus domain.com, they're so active on social media like Twitter, they're at domain.com, they got great customer support. It's really just a fun place to do business. So the guys over at domain.com want to hook our fans up with an additional offer. Get this, 15% off the already affordable domain names and web hosting if you use the coupon code HACK5, H-A-K-5, at domain.com's checkout. That's 15% off and big savings, so don't forget to use the coupon code H-A-K-5. When you think domain names, think domain.com.